All right. So just watch the debate. Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And what a mess. What a disaster. Chris Wallace was very busy trying to be the moderator. And overall, I don't think anybody came across as the winner. I don't think any minds are, are, are going to be changed with this debate. Most of it was the same old stuff we've heard over and over again, rehashed. Uh, I, th I don't think Biden landed any good punches on Trump, but he didn't have to. Trump was his worst enemy. He just kept interrupting. And then Chris Wallace trying to be the moderator. Can you please stop interrupting? And then they'd go back and forth. And it, spent, it seems like half the debate was Trump and Chris Wallace, the moderator, going back and forth. He just would not stop. And it just become, became frustrating. It's like, just let Joe Biden finish write your notes, be prepared for your response, and and then hit them. But just the constant interruptions, I would say the best hit Donald Trump had on Joe Biden was when he asked, name one law enforcement organization that supports you. Just one, just one. We have time, just one. Uh, Joe Biden couldn't come up with one. And this was on the subject of law and order and who has the best policies. So I thought that was Trump's greatest moment. Joe Biden's weakest moment was when he said Antifa was an idea, not an organization. Are you kidding me? I've been following Antifa for years. They are a well-organized global organization. And the reason why I became aware, uh, aware of them is because I'm for free speech. I'm for debate. They're for shutting things down with violence. They're not for having debate. Their big thing is, oh, when you see a Nazi punch a Nazi and then they classify anybody who disagrees with them, anybody who's a conservative basically as, as a Nazi and therefore they can use violence to shut them down. So that's completely what I get against what I stand for, against what this country stands for. So I've been a critic of Antifa for, for years and to see the damage they've, they've done to see uh, the, the people they've shut down from speaking at, at colleges uh, to see the violence that, that they've used, the, the anarchy, and to see Joe Biden come up and say, oh, Antifa is just an idea. Wow. So I think that's going to get him uh, hit. You know, one of the most things uh, Trump brought up, Biden's son, Hunter, over and over again, again getting three and a half million dollars from uh, the guy in Russia, the, the Ukraine, the Burisma, Joe Biden uh, not giving Ukraine a billion dollars in aid till they fired the prosecutor that was involved. And the only thing uh, Biden says was, oh, that's not true. It's been debunked. It's not true. That's been discredited. Uh, there was also back and forth, of course, about the coronavirus handling. Joe Biden saying Trump's responsible for 200,000 deaths. Trump saying, well, if you were in charge, it would have been over 2 million because you wouldn't have shut down travel to China because you said that was that was racist. But that was, again, stuff that's already been rehashed. Nothing new. And just because Trump came across as unlikable, I think that's hurting him, especially with uh, with women. And he didn't do himself any favors. So even if he was saying, you know, the, the truth and interrupting uh, Biden, it didn't matter because of the way he just he just came across. So no real clear winners. Uh, Biden, to his credit, stayed conscious throughout the whole thing, uh, stayed pretty much on subject and didn't get lost, didn't go a long pause without answering a question, getting stuck except when Trump asked him, name one law enforcement organization that, that's supporting you. But he made it the 90 minutes. And, uh, you know, since the bar was set so low for him, I think he comes across doing pretty well. But anyway, that's my take on it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>